are in lockdown. Don't venture away from your radio. Don't go outside. Don't get infected. Welcome to Quarantine. Quarantine Radio Theater brings you new productions of old-time radio as well as new productions of original material. So, dim the lights, sit back, and close your eyes. We are in quarantine. Welcome to Quarantine Radio Theater. We are so glad you could join us. If you are a new listener, please hit that subscribe and like button so you can be notified when our shows hit the airwaves. If you are a returning listener, welcome back. And uh, don't worry, I'm fine. <laughs> uh, luckily, the zombies had just eaten. <laughs> And Allison apologized for shooting me with that tranquilizer dart. Uh, to let bygones be bygones, we are jumping into yet another genre. The comedy, the fabulous Dr. Tweedy, A Friend in Need. Uh, this show originally aired between 1946 and 1947, which, in fact, uh, that's all the show ran. Uh, but, uh... Some interesting facts. Frank Morgan, best known for his five roles in The Wizard of Oz, starred as Dr. Tweedy. Tonight, our Dr. Tweedy is played by our very own Brian Kapler. Quarantine Radio Theater presents Brian Kapler as the fabulous Dr. Tweedy, written by Robert Riley Crutcher. A friend in need is a friend indeed. Dr. Tweedy, the dean of men at Potts College, has a host of young friends, and they are always in need. Dr. Tweedy, can I borrow ten dollars? But his young friends aren't really selfish. Whenever Dr. Tweedy is in need, they are right there, offering to help. Dr. Tweedy, I know how busy you are, and I'd like to help you out. You know, answer the telephone, or type, or... Well, that's very sweet of you, Susan. What would you like to start with? In advance of my salary. Yes, Dr. Tweedy now has a pretty little secretary who has relieved him of all his tedious office details. The telephone is answered promptly. Hello? Messages are taken efficiently. No, Susan isn't here. Yes, I'll tell her when she comes in. And of course, Dr. Tweedy's constant stream of callers are treated with the utmost respect. No, Susan isn't here. Can't you read that sign I tacked on the door? It's printed very plainly, Susan is out. Well, when do you expect her back? On payday. Would you care to leave your name in her visitor's book, Volume 10? No, sir. I haven't got anything else to do. I'll wait. All right, Howdy. You wait. We'll grow old together. Sit over there at her desk. I want to see how it looks with somebody behind it. Okay. But first, I'd better bring in my slush pump. Slush pump? Yeah. I'm Slide Man in the band. Slide Man? I play the trombone. I left it out in the hall, and I don't want anybody to swap it. Hello? No, Susan isn't here. Yes, if I see her, I'll tell her. A nylon line in the drugstore. And if you see her, tell her there is a Susan line in my office. Dr. Tweedy, what about the school song? What do you mean? I didn't even know we had one. We've got one, all right, but we can't play it. Why not? 
Well, it might have been back okay in 1880 when this was just a girl's school, but now that it's co-educational... What's the name of the song? Gentle Maidens. Gentle Maidens? Hmm. How does it go? Get this. Gentle Maidens, proud and true, pure as snow and sweet as dew. Oh, dear. Well, that will never do. How do you think that would sound on the football field? Yes, you're, you're, quite, you're quite right. We'll have to have some new lyrics. But the lyrics are the best part of it. Just listen to the music. You see, that song was originally written for mandolins and banjos, and we can't do anything with it. Perhaps if you played it at a faster tempo? We've tried that. Listen. See, that doesn't do any good. No, it doesn't, Howdy. But it gets it over with faster. Dr. Tweety, we might as well face it. Gentle Maidens is a load of corn. Uh, can't you, you know, do something to it? You mean lick my chops? I beg your pardon? Throw in a few licks? No, you can't gut bucket Gentle Maidens. They won't stay in the bucket. Listen. See? Yes. Er, uh, howdy. Does it require much wind to blow that thing? No. What are we going to do about that song? Let's try to forget it. But Dr. Tweety, we have to have a school song. You shall have one. A new one. A very good one, too. I've done some composing in my day. I'll write it myself. Oh, well, maybe Gentle Maidens isn't so bad. I'm back, Dr. Tweedy. Oh, hello, Howdy. Oh, Susan. The band sent me over to see about getting you to be drum majorette for us. Me? A drum majorette? Yeah. You've got the makings for a terrific one. Gee, that would be wonderful, but I can't. Why not? It would take up so much time, and what would poor Dr. Tweedy do without me? Keep on answering the telephone. Uh, but, Susan... If you'd like to resign your position as secretary... Oh, no, Dr. Tweedy. I'd never do a thing like that. Never. Uh, well, of course, it would be a great blow to me, but... No, uh... I wouldn't do that to you. I need the money. Can you spin a baton? Sure, I can. Dr. Tweedy, where's your cane? No, 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 not in the office. Here it is. Play something for me, Howdy. Okay. See? Stop! I can throw it up in the air and catch it, too. Watch. Oh, look out for that face. Oh. Well, I've got to get back to band practice. Oh, wait for me. I want to see the costume. Wait, howdy. You left your trombone. Er, er, slush pump. Hmm. Hmm. It doesn't look like it's hard to blow. <gasps> <laughs> Dr. Tweedy, I have put up with some horrible things since I have been Dean of Women here, but this racket is more than I can endure. Will you please put that thing down? No, can't, Miss Susie. My tongue is caught in the mouthpiece. I can't understand a word you say. <sighs> Miss Susie, please understand. I would not want this in my office any more than you want it here. But... <sighs> Dr. Tweedy, I am expecting a very important visitor. The man who leases the land to this college, to be exact. I shall appreciate it if you will curb your musical impulses until he is gone. Thank you. I am currently stuck on a predicament. I am stuck. Hello? No, Susan isn't here. Will you have to leave a message? Won't you sit down, Mr. Hippie? No thanks, Max Stilsey. I'm not staying long. Just drop by your office to tell you the news. News? Yes. Your lease on the grounds has expired and I'm not renewing it. Mr. Hippie! You, you can't possibly mean that! Yes, 
I'm selling it to the school for one dollar. I won't live forever, and I don't want any fighting over my will after I've gone. Hi. I, I just don't know what to say. Oh, you know my wife went to school here. As a matter of fact, I proposed to Bessie on that stone bench in front of the administration building. She's mighty fond of this school. I understand, Mr. Hippie. I have the papers here in my pocket. All they require is Mr. Potts' signature. Well, um, Mr. Potts was taking his grandmother to a summer resort. I'll try to catch him and have him stop off on the way. That's fine. I'll be here a day or two. Well, I think I'll take a little stroll around the campus. I like to watch the students, and I want to sit for a while on that old stone bench. <laughs> Excuse me, young lady. Do you mind if I share this bench with you? No, sir. I'm waiting for Howdy Pfeffer. Your sweetheart? Not yet. I haven't had time to work on him. May I ask your name? Susan. Susan Woodward. You're the very image of my wife. Your wife? Oh, fifty years ago. Oh. First time I saw her, she was sitting on this bench, just like you. She was a music student here. I'm interested in music, too. You are? The slide trombone. Howdy plays it like an angel. I'm going to be a drum majorette in the band. Let me show you my costume. I have it here in this bag. There. Isn't that something? Isn't it gorgeous? Yes. Beautiful. Oh, here comes Dr. Tweedy. I want to show it to him. Dr. Tweedy? Dr. Tweedy? Uh, I don't want to talk now, Susan. My tongue is sore. Look what I'm going to wear. Oh, a very pretty. A very pretty hair ribbon. A hair ribbon? This is my majorette costume. That thing? Isn't it simply gorgeous? Oh, yes. What there is of it. It's two-piece. It's too little. You can't be seeing anything like that. Oh, yes, I can. That's what I mean. You can't wear it. But he likes it. He thinks it's all right. He? Who is he? This man here on the bench. He said it was beautiful. Oh, he did, did he? Well, sir, a man your age ought to know better. Please, Dr. Tweedy. I said no, and I mean no. Don't raise your voice to that girl. Oh, I'll thank you to mind your own business. Do you know who I am? I am Rupert Hippie. I'd never heard of you. You will. What are you doing on our grounds, anyway? I came here to sell. For one dollar. Only one dollar, mind you. Oh, a peddler! To sell for only one dollar the land which I have been leasing to Potts College for fifty years. That has nothing to... Leasing? Uh, to sell? But if a horse and buggy fuddy-duddy like you is going to spoil all the fun for the students, I think I'll change my plan. Good day, sir. <laughs> Wait a minute. I assure you, you misunderstood my motives about the costume. <laughs> What's so funny? <laughs> I'm no prude. I was only thinking of the football team. How could the poor boys keep their minds on the game with Susan strutting around in that costume? <laughs> you see, we want the boys to win. <laughs> now with her on the field, they'd, they'd get their signals mixed. Uh, well, maybe I was hasty. Uh, of of course you were, um, and a little thing like that wouldn't stop you from giving the land to the school. Well, no. See, I'm very sentimental about this place and its fine old traditions. My wife wrote the school song. She did. She did. Well, only the lyrics. Your wife wrote <clears throat> Gentle Maidens? It's nice to know the song will live on with the school forever. That's a beautiful song. Yes, it haunts me. Gentle maidens, proud and uh, true, uh, yeah. pure, pure as, as snow, snow and sweet as dew. And you. sweet as dew. Mm -hmm. What what beauty, what, what poetry. Every word a gem. You have a fine voice. Go ahead, sing the rest of it. Oh, the, the, the rest of it. N no, no. The, the first lines are so beautiful, I, I like to go over and over them. Uh, 
Uh, uh we, we better go to my office. Dr. Tweedy, I got my trombone out of your office and I... Uh, you go away, Howdy. Uh, can't you see Mr. Hippie and I are harmonizing on our, our beautiful school song? Beautiful? You said it. Uh, uh, gentlemen, go away. Proud and true. But you said... Goodbye, Howdy. You said it was awful. You said you'd junk it and write a better one yourself. Junk? My wife's lyrics? Of course not, Mr. Hippie. I, I wouldn't touch a word of your wife's junk. Er, er lyrics. It, it is just that I, I thought we should give them the magnificent musical setting they deserve. The words are perfect. It's the music that is junk. Uh, your wife didn't write the music, too. No. Ah. I did. A magnificent melody. <laughs> Gentle maidens, proud and true. And now, back to Brian Kapler as the fabulous Dr. Tweedy. Mr. Potts, chairman of the Board of Trustees, has finally arrived at the college, and it seems Mr. Potts has his hands full. Now, Grandma. Why did you drag me down here? You knew I wanted to go to Gooseneck Lake. Yes, Grandma. We're going to Gooseneck Lake, but first I... Uh... Why did you drag me down here? Because, Grandma, I have to attend to some very important college business. Come on, Grandma. Please, let's go over to the administration building. I don't want to go inside. It's nice outdoors. That's why I want to go to Gooseneck Lake. Yes, Grandma, but you don't understand. Mr. Hippie, who has been leasing us this land, now wants to give it to the college. There are papers to be signed. Now, come on. I don't want to. And don't you tell me what to do. No, Grandma. I want to take a walk. Well, when you get tired, just come back to... I don't get tired. Do you have a jackknife? No. Why? Where are you going? It's none of your business. I'm going down to the old elm tree. Sonny? Oh, Sonny? Madam, are you addressing me? Do you have a jackknife, Sonny? No, I... What are you doing to that tree? You have eyes, haven't you? Can't you see? I'm carving a heart with initials in it. At your age? Every ten years or so I have to clean it out. A boy and I carved it in there in 1868. Oh, then you were one of the original students here. I should have married him. Why didn't you? I wanted to, Sonny, but my family made me marry a millionaire. Oh, that's too bad. All he could think of was work. He was the bustle king. You mean he hustled and bustled? <laughs> yes, but I should have married Elmer Spriggs. He was a poor farmer. And how he could drive a buggy with one hand. Well, we're always happy to have our old students come back and visit us. Make yourself at home. And if there is anything you want, just call on me, Dr. Tweedy. Thaddeus Q. You're a very polite and considerate boy. Boy? <laughs> well, thank you. I wish I could say as much for my grandson. Anything you wish, anything you desire. Just call on Dr. Tweedy. Oh, hello, Mr. Potts. Come on in, Tweedy. I was just waiting to hear from Miss Tilsey. She's out trying to find Mr. Hippie. I suppose you've heard the good news. You mean... About his giving the land to the college. Yes. Er, Mr. Potts, um, did you know that Mr. Hippie and his wife wrote the school song? Yes, everybody knows that. Why? Well, I didn't. Yes. Go on, Tweety. Well, I made a few unfortunate remarks to him about the lyrics. Then I followed through with a few unfortunate remarks about the music. Yes. Go on. Uh, go on, tell me the rest. I know you're a busy man, Mr. Potts, so I'll get right to the point. I don't think you will get the land for one dollar. 
Do you know what this means? Yes. We will have to pay a higher price or be evicted. Mm-hmm. And where will we get the money? Well, Mr. Potts... Well, don't look at me. You've always been a very generous man about... Keep your hands out of my pocket. I've been a sucker long enough. You'll just have to find a bigger sucker. That won't be easy. I'm washing my hands of the whole matter. No more Potts money is going into this school. You'll have to promote this yourself. Well, how does one go about promoting? Well, first, you find someone who has more money than he knows what to do with, and then you take it away from him. But that's robbery. If you talk them out of it, it's charity. I, I could be very persuasive if I tried. Would you better start being persuasive with some of the wealthy alumni? Wealthy alumni? It is someone who married a millionaire. That's right. Oh, an old lady, perhaps? An old lady should be a sense for you, Tweety. Mr. Potts, I think I know just the person. Who is she? She went to school here a long time ago. Well, then go work on her. Play on her sentimentality. Oh, she's very sentimental. <laughs> well, that's half the battle, Tweety. Tell her how the hallowed halls will be torn down. Brick by brick. The lovely lawn will be trampled. Blade by blade. Why, if you handle her right, she'll leave her every cent to the college. But what about her relatives? A wealthy old lady always has relatives. Yes, some greedy guy just waiting to get his hands on her money. <laughs> Point that out to her, Tweety. P play it up big. Leave it to me. When I'm through, your money problems will be over. Well, hello, Sonny. Are you back again? Yes. And see what I brought you? A jackknife. Here, uh, let me help you clean out those initials. Thank you. I should have married that boy. You mean instead of the millionaire? You said he was a millionaire, didn't you? It's all he could think about. Money. What a shame. And my grandson is the same way. You aren't a grandmother. I'm a great-grandmother. No, you're fooling. You, a great-grandmother? Impossible. Uh, you don't even look old enough to be a, a grandmother. I'm 94. 94? You're really 94? Well, that's what I tell people. But I'm really 96. Unbelievable. Sonny, I wish my grandson were like you. He was supposed to take me to Gooseneck Lake. You'd have taken me to Gooseneck Lake, wouldn't you? You'd be there this very moment. Yes, riding in the speedboats. The way he acts, you'd think all that money was his. But it's mine. And he can't wait to get his hands on it. Huh, no. The ungrateful, greedy wretch. Yes. He's a pompous fathead. Have you ever thought of leaving your money to a worthy cause? What's a worthy cause? Think of the happy days you had here in school, when you sat right here under this tree with the boy you loved. What memories! If this tree could only talk! <laughs> I'm glad it can't. <laughs> Dear old Potts College, Around me shall hover, in sadness or glee, till life's dream be over, sweet memories of thee. That's nice, Sonny. Recite some more. Some more? Uh, let me see. Oh, yes. How beautiful is youth, how bright it gleams, with its illusions, aspirations, dreams. Book of beginning, story without end, each maid a heroine, each man a friend. <laughs> Here's the office right here. Mr. Potts will certainly be surprised. <laughs> you bet he will. Oh, I don't believe I caught your name. You just call me Grandma. Well, Mr. Potts, bene vidi vici. I came, I saw, I conquered. Tweety has done it again. This gracious lady is the new benefactor of Potts College. Tweety, you, you've... <laughs> Leaves you speechless, doesn't it? You got her to give you an endowment? Exactly. 
Grandma is leaving every cent of her tremendous fortune to Potts College, aren't you, Grandma? You bet I am. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Oh, Tweety. No, 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 this is all a bad dream. Think, Mr. Potts, the college is now completely independent. Isn't that wonderful? Uh, doesn't that make you happy? <laughs> Grandma, you're the most wonderful woman on the earth. Oh, Grandma, why? Why? Because you didn't take me to Gooseneck Lake. That's why. Besides, I like this college. I like Dr. Tweety. It serves you right, Alexander. Alexander? Oh, then you know Mr. Potts. Tweety, this woman is my grandmother. You mean you are the pompous fathead? Yes, I, I mean no. Oh, uh, well, I don't want to interfere in any of your family affairs. Um, I'll leave you two alone. <laughs> We've been waiting for you, Dr. Tweety. Yes, we... Susan, my office is not the place to entertain your... Oh, why, hello, Mr. Hippie. I hope you don't mind, Dr. Tweety. We're having a little jam session here. Jam session? Mr. Hippie says it's okay to change the school song. Yes, after talking with Susan, I realized you can't force an old song like that on young people. I mean, it means a lot to me, of course, but I don't want to be a... What do you call it? A square. Yes. A long hair. Well, then you've changed your mind. You're giving the land to the college? Yes. Well, well that's wonderful. I'll go right in and tell Mr. Potts. Uh, uh, maybe you'd better tell him, Mr. Hippie. No hurry. First, I want to hear the song that Howdy has composed. It's a uh, mellow Rooney. Play it out, Howdy. Give out. Okay. Wait a minute. Is that thing hard to blow? Easy. Like to try it? Oh, yes, I would. Mr. Hippie, I, I wouldn't do that if I were you. Why not? Well, if you're not careful, you get your tongue caught in it. Here, let me show you. Uh, keep, keep, keep your tongue way back, because if you push it up front like this... Uh! Oh, well, don't just stand there. Help me. <laughs> Sorry, I just have the uh, Frank Morgan voice stuck in my head. I just had to get it out. Brian, have you seen Bri Brian? Brian? Where the heck did he go? Where is everyone? Brand? Allison? Hey, Megan. I'm coming. I, I was just feeding the zombies. You didn't. Didn't what? Uh, they were hungry. <laughs> if you don't feed them, they tend to get unruly. How could you? Allison was your friend. She was my friend. Well, hold on a second. You think I fed Allison to the... Not a chance. She isn't here. She's all tied up uh, on an island with her family. Whew. I was worried there for a bit. Wait. What did you feed the zombies? The pizza man... Pizza man... They are crazy about Italians, uh, food. Okay. Well, you need to close out the show. Holy smokes. <laughs> I lost track of time. Uh, thanks. Well, thanks for listening to the fabulous Dr. Tweety, a friend in need. Featuring the vocal talents of Megan Knoll as the narrator, Brian Kapler as Dr. Tweety, Sherry Hawkins as Susan, Andrew Richards as Howdy, Emily Schneider as Miss Tilsey, Kelly Hoagland as Mr. Hippie, Sean Chevalier Kelman as Grandma, and Brant McCants as Mr. Pitts. Quarantine Radio Theater is a collaborative effort uniting talented individuals from their homes. Using whatever recording device we have available, 
we try to bring a bit of entertainment to you, the listener, during these trying times. If you like what we're doing and like new takes on old-time radio scripts as well as original material done in the old-time radio style, please hit that like, subscribe, and follow buttons, as well as leaving us a comment to tell us what shows you would like us to do next. We are excited about this new slash old format for us and invite you to follow us on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, Google Podcasts, YouTube, Anchor, Breaker, Pocket Cast, Radio Public, and more coming soon. I'm your host, Brant McCants, and on behalf of everyone here at Quarantine Radio Theater, stay safe and please be kind to one another. Ha, 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 ha,